on Monday, we were going through whole numbers and um, we were at the stage where we were busy doing some what we call math literacy. We were doing some word sums. All right, so some word sums, and we were about to move on to some ratio and rate kind of questions. The last question that we did was we did a question based on speed, distance, and time. And tonight, we are going to continue with that. Okay. And the first question that we're looking at says, the number of teachers at a school has increased. So that's the really important question here. Okay. Let's just make sure that our pen is working. All right. So the number of questions has increased in the ratio. All right. Of five is to six. Okay. So in the ratio of five is to six. So guys, there's some important words here. The first word is increased. So increase means to get bigger. And then they're giving us a ratio and they're saying the ratio is five is to six. If there used to be 25 teachers at the school, how many teachers are there now? So remember the word increase means that it's getting bigger, okay? Some people are telling me, JD is telling me they did it on Monday, fantastic, well done, okay? So some of you did it on Monday because you could see the screen, well done, all right. So the number of teachers has increased, it's gotten bigger in the ratio of five is to six. There used to be 25 teachers at the schools, how many teachers are there now? So go ahead, write your answer down first on paper. Go and try that. Um, uh, Yolanda, there are some people who are saying that they can't hear me. They're having a problem with their audio. Um, is there maybe a, a, a prompt that you can send them? I'm not sure um, what it is. Yes, I'm sending that privately. So maybe I should Thank put it so on much. the public so awesome. that everybody Thank can you. see, can't see. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so let's have a look at how we would do a question like this, because I'm seeing a few people who are saying, oh, ma'am, it'll still be 25. Ma'am, how do I do this exactly? So if a number is increasing, it means that it is getting bigger. So if I take this ratio, another way to write a ratio is to write it in a fraction, okay? If the previous number was 25 teachers, and I want this number to get bigger, then I'm gonna multiply this by my ratio, okay? But I'm gonna put the bigger number on the top and I'm gonna put the smaller number on the bottom. All right, so I can take my calculator, all right? So I can take my calculator and we can say 25 times by six over five, 25 times by six over five, or I can go do some old school maths. Okay, so I can take it back and I can go say, well, 25 is the same thing as saying 25 over one, all right? Then I can go say to myself, five goes into five once and it goes into 25 five times. Five times by six is 50 and one times one is one. Six divided by one gives me 50. So the new number of teachers will be 50 teachers. So whenever they give you a question that talks about ratios and it's increasing or it's decreasing, all right, that's a really good way for you to do it. If you learned how to do it a different way, so there's a different way that you could have learned how to do it, they could have said to you that a ratio is five is to six. Oopsie, sorry guys. They could have said the ratio was five is to six, all right? They could have said to you that it's increased, so the bigger number is on this side, so that means that 25 is on that side, all right? Okay, so this is a different way to do it. Okay, it's a different way to do it, all right? So if we look on this side, what did I do to five to get to 25? I multiplied it by five. So what must I do on the other side? I must do the same. And so that gives me 50. So therefore, this will be 50 teachers. So this is just a different method. I quite like the first method, 
Okay, I quite like the first method. The reason I like the first, me the first method is because I like to say to myself, it's increasing, it's getting bigger. So I need to take my ratio, I need to put the bigger number on the top, the smaller number on the bottom, and then I will multiply it. If you got the same answer as me, okay, if you got the same answer as me, but you did it in a different way, and you still got the same answer as me, that's cool. I'm happy for you to have done it that way. All right, I do see that I've got a hand up. I am going to, oh, the hand's gone down. Okay, we're going to have a look at the next question. Okay, we're going to have a look at the next question. All right, we have to make it a little bit smaller. I'm so sorry, guys. All right, the next question says, ABC Life needs to have their annual statements audited. They are quoted 8,500 Rand plus 14% VAT by Audits Inc. How much will ABC for Life have to pay Audits Inc. in total? So that is a lot of words that we've got to turn into some maths. Okay. I really don't like it when they give me so many words. I'd rather, much rather put it into maths. I don't know about you. All right, I don't know about you, but having all those words, I'd rather put it into maths. So let's have a look at it. They're saying to me that they get quoted 8,500 Rand, all right? But then they get told that they also have to pay 14% VAT. So I can already tell you that there's a problem with this question. Who can tell me? In the chat, what's the new VAT percentage? Is that VAT percentage correct, first of all? What's the, the, the there's a new VAT percentage? Is 14% correct? Just as a general knowledge thing. What have you guys learned? You should have learned it in EMS. Wonderful, nice. Your EMS teachers would be so proud of you guys. Well done. Okay, so the new VAT is actually 15%. Completely agree with you, okay? So there is a problem with this question, all right? But we're going to carry on and we're going to use 14% because that's what they've given us. Okay. Well done. Well done, everybody. Your EMS teachers will be so proud. All right. So they are quoted 8,500 plus they need to add 14% VAT. So what do we need to do first? First of all, we need to take eight. Ooh, that's not going to help us. We need to take 8,500. And we need to work out what 14% actually is. Now, you would have learned, and you would probably would have learned this, I think probably in grade six, that percentages are the same thing as saying 14 over 100. Okay. Um, Sianda is also telling me that 14% is the same thing as saying 0, 0,14. That is absolutely correct. So 14% is the same thing as saying 14 over 100. It's also the same thing as saying 0, 0,14. So who wants to tell me, who can tell me what is 8,500 times by 14 over 100, please? Who wants to tell me 8,500 times by 14 over 100? What do we get? Good, nice guys. Well done, and I see I've got a hand raised. Um, Tando, what does that give me? 8,500 times 14 over 100. Uh, Ma'am, it will give you uh, 1,190. Thank you so much. So it gives you 1,100. And 90. Now, guys, I want you to be careful here, and a lot of you didn't fall for this because you're giving me the right answer inside the chat. But I want you to be very, very careful here when you're doing a question like this, because the question then says, How much will they have to pay in total? So remember that this question says 8,500 plus 14% VAT. So it doesn't just say calculate what the VAT is, it says, How much will they pay in total? Total. So if you remember anything from this Watobi lesson when you were in grade eight on a Wednesday night on the 28th of June, okay, remember that it says in total. And whenever the question you're working with that and the question asks you in total, you need to go and then say 8,500 plus 1190. Okay, why am I saying that? Because if you guys go and you take um, Maths Lit as a subject when you get to grade 10 and you choose Maths Lit, all right, 
you will get questions like this, okay? You will work with that again. You'll work with that in grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. So make sure that you remember this. If it says in total, you need to go back and you need to add to that on. Please, please, please do not forget. So rand, we must always put the rand sign, 9,690. Again, what else is going to save you from losing some marks? The symbol is going to save you. Put the rand symbol in. You don't want to go and do a question that's worth three marks and then lose one mark. Okay, why would you lose one mark? Because you wouldn't put the RAND symbol in. All right, so you need to make sure that you put the RAND symbol in as well because you're dealing with money. Okay, all right. I hope that you really did well in that question. I hope that it made sense. Moving on to our next question. Oh my, we're going to have to make it a bit smaller again. So, Rishmi invests 35,000 for three years at an interest rate of 8.2% per annum. Determine how much money will be in her account at the end of the investment period. So she invests 35,000 for three years at an interest rate of 8.2% per annum. Determine how much money is going to be in her account at the end of the investment period. So go ahead and try that question for me. I see that I have people asking me to unmute them. Guys, you need to raise your hands if you have a question. If you've raised your hand, I'll know that you have a question and then I'll be able to unmute you. But otherwise, I can't just unmute you for nothing. All right, so if you have a question, raise your hand. I'll be able to answer your questions. All right, in the meantime, go have a look at question six for me. And to, uh, to Han, you know that that's the deal in this, in this, uh, in this class, right? So you know you should know how to raise your hand. And if not, I'll definitely help you here on the chat. Okay. Thank you so much, Yulinda. I think there was another one as well. I think Katlejo as well was also wanting some help there too. Guys, sorry. I'm not sure if they are new, but of course we raise <laughs> our hands. Okay. Find a reaction. Okay, so listen up, everybody, while you're busy working. Anyone who's new, Find a reaction button on your device. It's written their reactions. So you click on it and then you will see a raise of a hand and then you click on the raise of a hand. just like that on my screen, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's me raising my hand and then we will know if you have a question or not, okay? And you are most welcome to also post your question on the chat. I'll be watching the chat, okay? Thank you. It looks like Atlehang has some audio problems there. All right, so number six, let's see. So Reshmi invests 35,000 for three years at an interest rate of 8.2% per annum. Determine how much money will be in her account at the end of the investment period. So this one's a bit of a tricky one for me because if you guys have started doing finance at school, I'm not sure if any of you have actually done finance yet, but there isn't really enough information for us to go on there. But because it's, we haven't really done finance yet, okay, we can go and we can try this question without. Okay, so some people have said that they have done finance. So then you can tell me that definitely that we're missing some information there. If you've done finance, then you should know that it should either say simple interest or compound interest. And we can see there that it definitely doesn't say whether it's simple interest or compound interest. Okay, so we're missing out on that little piece of information. All right, I'm going to do this question in two ways. I'm going to do it as though this person, first of all, did it with simple interest. So I'm going to do this question as though she had invested this money using simple interest. And then I'm going to go do this as though she done it with compound interest. Now, if you haven't done this yet in school and you have no idea what I'm talking about, ma'am, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard of simple interest and I've never heard of compound interest in my entire life. All right. That's okay. That's okay. All right. I'm all good. All right. It's still coming. It's okay. It's still coming. Okay. 
if you have done simple interest and compound interest in school, then you will know that we're missing some information here. All right. So, Rashmi invested her money um, at an interest rate of 8,2% per annum. How much money was in her account at the end of the investment period? So, if I'm doing simple interest, then I'm going to go say, well, if for the end of the investment period, to calculate simple interest, I say P times I times N. So I take the P, which is 35,000, times by the I, which is 0, 0.082, times by the N, which is 3. And loads of you are telling me that it was 2870. I'm trusting you, so I'm hoping you guys are right. 2870. Again, some of us have not read the question correctly. Okay, some of us have not read the question correctly. I'm seeing some people are telling me, ma'am, it's 8,610. So I do believe you, but I'm going to go calculate it on my calculator quick. So 35,000 times 0, 0, 0.082 times by 3. Oh, you guys are right. Jadley, you are right. All right, for three years, the interest will be 8610. So we need to make sure that we're doing it for the three years, not just the one year. Okay, it's over three years, not just one year. And then I'm going to say at the end, I'll say 35,000 plus 8610. And that gives me Rand 43610. And we are actually not going to do the compound interest because we are happy with doing it the simple interest way because compound interest comes in grade nine. So I'm happy to do it that way. Okay, so that's one way for you to do your working. All right, please remember that it is over three years, guys. You don't just calculate the interest for one year, you calculate it for the three years All right okay so if you need to screenshot that take a screenshot quickly of that i'm going to answer this question okay you got this question right jadley tell me what's up so ma'am is that a plus or divide sign it's a on plus. a equals but ma'am my calculator says it's 93 610 Oh no, it's definitely not that. It's Let me try it again. Plus. Try it again, plus 35,000 plus, I think maybe you added in an extra zero. 8610. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, mm -hmm. it's 93,610. No, sir, 35,000, 35,000. Yeah. 35,000 plus. 8,610 equals. Oh. Ah. It was actually wrong. 85,000. Mm, I thought so. It's okay. Don't stress. I okay, ma'am. No problem. Okay, so make sure you've got a screenshot of that. I'm going to do it one other way with you guys quickly so that you've got two different ways to do it. So that's one way to do it. Another way that you could do it is you could use the whole formula, and the whole formula is A is equal to P1 plus I times N. So we would say 35,000 times by 1 plus I is equal to 0, 0, 0,082 times by N, which is 3. When you put that into your calculator, you get 43610. So you get the exact same answer. You get the exact same answer, but now you're using the whole formula instead. So it's the exact same thing. All right, I'm gonna move this down so you guys can do the next question while I answer Sean's question very quickly. Okay, all right. So you guys work on the next question. Sean, what is your question? 
Oh, Mama was asking if we can, which one must be used if it's the simple interest or compound interest? So we're going to use simple interest, so the exact same one that we've done, Sean. We're not even going to do the compound interest because in grade eight, we actually don't need to know the compound interest formula. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. No problem, Sean. All right, guys. I see that Laura's got a question. Laura, are you asking me a question on number six or are you wanting to do number seven? No, ma'am. I have a question on number six. Sure, Laura. What's up? Um, ma'am, why did we say SI equals P times I times N? Okay, so when we do this, Laura, I'm just going to erase this one quickly for you guys. It's easier for us to use formulas, hey? So the formula for interest or simple interest is simple interest is equal to the principal amount, which is 35,000, times by the interest rate, I, which is 0, 0,082, times by N, which is the investment period. So what do we know? How much did we invest, first of all, Lara? What did we, we start with? We invested 3,000. Five hundred. Let's just say three, five, and triple zero. Do you agree? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, okay, I was cool. reading the question wrong because it's a bit Don't small stress. on the screen. Absolutely. Don't stress. And there's so many zeros there. I always just say three, five, triple zero. Don't stress. Times five. Now when we get to the interest rate, Laura, you can either keep it as 8,2%, but sometimes when you put that in your calculator, your calculator gets super confused, okay? So it's easier to either put it as a percentage, as a fraction, so like this, or to put it as a decimal, so 0, 0,082, okay? Or to put it as a fraction like this. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am, it does. And then how many years did we invest this for? What was the period? Three what was years. The Three years. So we need to times that by? three so even oh, if we okay. don't use that whole formula even if we don't worry about like what does si mean and what does p mean and what does i mean like even if we're not worried about that all right what do we actually need to do to calculate what the interest is we need to do that all right when we put that in our calculator it gives us eight six one zero hey yes ma'am Okay, now, what did the question ask us? Asked us how much was in the account at the end mm -hmm. of the investment period. Now, if you put money in your bank account and it was 35,000 at the beginning, and at the end you went to go draw your money out and there was only 8,000 rand in it, would you be happy? No, ma'am. No, because what happens with that interest? What needs to happen with it? What do you do with that interest? You add it, you agree? Yeah. Good. So you start with the 35,000 and you add 8,610. And that leaves you with 43,610. Uh, thank you, ma'am. That, that, that makes a lot more sense than it, did, than it did before. You're welcome, Laura. No problem. All right, let's have a look at your next question that you guys did. It's a higher purchase question. I really love higher purchase questions because to me, they just make sense, guys. They really do. And I always um, get concerned when people say to me, they're like, ma'am, higher purchase doesn't make sense. There's so many words. I don't understand what's going on. Okay, higher purchase, we need to do it step by step by step by step. Again, it's a lot of words. We just need to turn it into math. That's all we need to do. So let's take this apart. All right, it says, Label wants to buy a lounge suite that costs seven triple nine um, and cash. So if he goes into the shop and he buys it right now, okay, he puts his cash dollar on the till, all right, it'll cost him seven triple nine. But who has 7,999 right in their bank account? Uh, very few people, okay. So what businesses do is they say, all right, if you don't have enough money to pay us right now, 
Then they say, don't worry, we'll do this deal for you guys. Okay, that's what higher purchase is. They're like, don't worry, we'll do this deal for you. Rather than paying all that money right now up front, pay us a deposit. Okay, we'll do this higher purchase deal with you guys. Give us a deposit up front. All right, so pay us a certain percentage of the money right now. And then what you can do for until you're an old man or an old woman, all right, or however long it takes you, you can pay off, all right? In this case, it's what? A lounge suite. So you can pay this lounge suite off, okay? It's a really great way for people, especially younger people, all right, to be able to afford things like computers, cell phones, lounge suites. Um, yeah, it's a really great way for you to be able to afford things, to be able to furnish your houses, to be able to buy laptops, even textbooks, guys, at university, you can do this. All right, so higher purchase is a really great um, arrangement, okay? Yes, oh, you do end up paying really high interest as well, but it is a really easy way for you to look at questions. So the question says, the store requires a 15% deposit up front. So instead of him paying that 799, he's only going to pay 15% of that money. And then he's going to pay 18 monthly installments of 445 rand. So calculate the deposit that Lesebo must pay. All right, who's helping me with this one? Who's helping me? Who's helping me? How am I going to work out this first one, the deposit? Who is helping me here tonight? All right, Judley's hand was up first, but come on, guys, don't make me answer all the questions. Come on, there must be somebody else. Hey, my people, come on, come on. Do you want me to pick? Because I can pick, you know me, guys. I'll <laughs> go around and select. So, <laughs> come on, guys, they are select. <laughs> there's 101 of you on 101 people on this call. There must yeah. be somebody else. Come on, guys, right, come let's, on. let's 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 raise your hand. Remember, we are here to help you also. So, we're not saying you're gonna get it right, we are saying that we are here to work it through with you. So it doesn't matter, okay? If you don't know the answer, raise your hand and we will lead you there. Who wants to be brave? Or do you want me to select someone? Hey, guys. There oh, we go, there Chantal. We go. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Linda. Thank you, Mr. Bong. Thank you, my Right. Friends. Chantal, let's go. How did you get the deposit amount? Um, Ma'am, mm -hmm. good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Chantal. Help me out. How do we do this? Ma'am, I said um, um, uh, the 7,999 times mm -hmm. 15, which is the percentage. Good. Of 100, which is equals to 1,199,85. You're amazing. Well done. Thank you for being brave. Well done. Thanks, Chantal. Ma'am. All right, guys. So that is perfect. One hundred one thousand one hundred and ninety nine comma eight five. So now, how much extra does the stable pay because he buys the lounge suite on higher purchase rather than in cash? So remember now, what has the stable actually done? So so far, the stable has already paid a deposit. Then what else is the stable going to do? So he's paid. 1,199 Rand and 85 cents. Then he's also going to go and he's going to pay 18 times 445 Rand. So he's going to pay the deposit plus he's going to pay these payments. Hey? So 18 times the 445 plus the 1,199,85 Rand. Is going to give us 9,209 Rand and 85 cents. Always be careful here. Loads of people forget about the deposits. They forget to go add the deposit on. But guys, he paid the deposit. So remember the deposit. All right. Now they want to know how much extra, how much extra does he pay? Okay. So we're going to take. The 9209,85, and we're going to subtract the original amount, the 7999. 
why are we going to do that? Because if he had walked in the store and he put his cash dollar on the payment, on the till, okay, that's how much he would have paid. But he didn't pay that. He went and he paid this 9,209 rand. So 9,209 rand, comma, 85 minus the 7999. How much extra did he pay? He paid 1,210 rand and 85 cents. Okay. Do not get intimidated by higher purchase questions. Don't let them scare you. Okay, don't let higher purchase questions scare you. Step by step by step by step by step. All right, it's not necessary for higher purchase questions to scare you. Okay, think about it as though it was you. Think about what would happen if you went into the store. All right. Okay. So, question eight. A question that I often get asked guys about exchange rates is, ma'am, do we have to learn exchange rates off the heart? No, you don't. Nope. Every single time you get an exchange rate question, they will give you a table of exchange rates. So in this question, they've given you this huge different table of all different exchange rates. They've given you euros and dollars and British pounds and Indian rupees and Australian dollars and Canadian dollars. And they've said to you, one um, South African rand, that's what ZAR stands for, is worth um, 0, 0,075370 euros. Okay. Or one euro is worth 13, comma, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. To buy one euro, it'll cost us 13,26. Rand. All right. So to buy one US dollar cost us 10 Rand and 17, comma, uh, sorry, 10, comma, 178807. All right. So to buy one Indian rupee only cost us 0, comma, 1,79902 cents. To buy one Swiss franc cost us, so all the way down here, 10, comma, 677960. All right, but to for the um, Swiss to buy one South African rand, it cost them zero comma zero nine three six five one cents in their money. Okay, so let's go have a look at what the questions are asking us. It says, "Oh, look at that! Write down the amount in rand that needs to be exchanged to get one Swiss franc. Give your answer to the nearest cent." So if we're looking at that, we've just gone and highlighted it for ourselves. So to get one Swiss franc, what did we say? It's going to be equal to 10 rand, and it's to the nearest cent, to the nearest cent. So you guys tell me in the chat, to the nearest cent, what will it be? To the nearest cent, it's going to be comma, six. What is our rounding skills eight at? Good, well done, comma six eight. All right, now it says, write down the only currency for which an exchange of a hundred rand will give you more than a hundred units of that currency. In other words, if we have a hundred rand, okay, which one of these currencies will give us more than 100 units of their currency. So if we have 100 rand, will we get more than 100 euros? Uh, definitely not, eh? Because it already costs 13 rand to get just one euro. Uh, dollars? Uh, definitely not. 10 dollars, a uh, 10 rand to get one dollar. British pounds? Nope. Um, Indian rupees? Uh, perhaps 17 cents to get one Indian rupee? Will we get more um, uh, units of the Indian rupee or is 100 cents? Definitely, guys. Well done. So this answer is definitely going to be the... Oopsie daisy. Oh, dear. And of course, my pen has just run out. There we go. This is going to be our Indian rupee. This is the only currency on the list that's worth 
less than what our money is worth. Everything else is worth more than our money. So everything else is worth more than our money. So for everything else, we will get less units of our money than of everything else. And finally, Nsako is traveling to Dubai and converts 10,000 into Emirati and dirhams. How many dirhams does Nsako receive? Assume no commission. So if we go look at the dirhams, okay, so let's go highlight the dirhams for you. Um, here are the dirhams over here. So to buy one dirham costs two rand, comma, seven, seven, one, three, two, seven. So in other words, we have 10,000 rand, and we need to convert that into dirhams. So what do we need to do, guys? First of all, first of all, is our money going to get bigger or is it going to get smaller when we convert it into dirhams? Is this 10,000, is it going to get bigger or is it going to get smaller? Good, Chantal, it's going to get smaller. Why is it going to get smaller? Because our money is worth less. Hey, we can see that. So when we're making something smaller in maths, do we times or do we divide? Tell me, what do we do when we're making something smaller in maths? Do we times or divide? Good, we divide. So we're going to divide by 2, 7, 7, 1, 3, 2, 7. So because we know that other units are going to get smaller, we're going to divide by 2, 7, 7, 1, 3, 2, 7. And that means that we're going to get 3, 6, 0, 8, 3, 7, 9, 6, 7. Emirati. Zero. Would we do the same calculation if we were looking for dollars? Yes, we would divide. Would we do the same thing if we were looking for Chinese yen? Yes, we would divide. Would we do the same thing if we were doing rupees? Yes, we would even divide there if we were doing rupees. But what would happen? Our money would then get, we would see that the money would actually become more. Okay. All right, hopefully you have taken a screenshot of that answer. We have a few minutes left of our lesson. We have a few minutes left of our lesson. So we're going to move on to the last section of our lesson for tonight. And you will see that that last part of our lesson for tonight is on some integers. Now, what are integers, guys? Integers are negative zero and positive numbers. So they are negative zeros and positive numbers. So what are integers? They are negative zero and positive numbers. Those are what integers are. Hey, when we're looking for integers, we're looking for negative zero and positive numbers. Yes, the number zero falls within integers. Remember, integers doesn't just mean negative. Lots of people get caught out where they think that integers just mean negative numbers. That's not true. Integers include negative, the number zero, and positive numbers. So the first question says to us, write a number in each box to make the calculations correct. A certain number plus a certain number gives you negative 11. Do you agree with me that you could literally write all sorts of numbers in there? But to be left with a negative number over here, you need to start with a very big negative number and a much smaller positive number. So you need to have a big negative number plus a smaller positive number will give you a negative number. Or like somebody else is saying there, you're going to say a negative number plus a negative number will give you a negative number. That is also perfectly true. So I would start with something like negative 18. So that's a big negative number plus 7 gives me negative 11. Okay. Or we could do something like um, 
negative 15 plus 4 would give me negative 11, okay? Or we could do something like somebody else has written there as well. Good. We could have negative 8 plus negative 3 gives me negative 11. All of those are correct. All of those are correct. Good. Negative 12 plus 1 gives you negative 11. Absolutely. Negative 6 plus negative 5. Absolutely. Okay. Then we've got a number minus another number gives you negative 11. So, what could we do here? We could have something like 4 minus uh, 15. So, 4 minus 15 could give you negative 11. Okay. Or we could have negative 3 minus 8 gives you negative 11. Okay, so now we're minusing. 11 minus 22 absolutely gives you negative 11. All right, who else? Give us some more in the chat. What else could you have? What minus what gives you negative 11? What minus what gives you negative 11? Guys, give us some more in the chat. What minus what would give you negative 11? Good, negative 6 minus 5, negative 2 minus 9, amazing, well done, what a good brain break we're having here. Okay, be careful, negative 10 plus negative 5 would give you negative 15, be careful there. 1 minus 12 gives you negative 11, well done, well done, amazing, well done guys, well done. Okay. Grade eight, you have been on fire tonight. Absolutely on fire. All right. So you're doing really good. So Absolutely. proud of you, my kids. <laughs> All right, guys. So Yulinda is going to put the quiz for you guys in the chat. So there's going to be a quiz for you guys tonight. It is Wednesday. The quiz is going to be in the chat for you tonight. So Yulinda is going to put the link for you guys there so that you guys can go and do the quiz. It has come to the end of our lesson. If you can believe it, the time went so fast. I cannot believe we're actually at the end of our lesson tonight. There is your quiz for tonight's lesson. Thank you guys so much for coming through tonight. Well done to Chantal for putting in their hand up and putting giving us an answer. Thank you so yes. much. I'm so proud of you guys. Amazing. Guys, I'm hoping that on Monday, some of you now know that um, we aren't that bad and we aren't so scary. And on some on Monday, you guys will um, also all put your hands up and offer some answers. Otherwise, yeah. have an amazing weekend. Okay, have an amazing weekend. Um, I see that I've got one or two more questions left. So I will answer one or two more questions and then we will be logging off for the night. So if you don't have any questions, you are more than welcome to go do the quiz and we will see you on Monday. Bye, guys. Bye, my people. Bye-bye, guys. Okay, so Hope. Hope, what is your question? Ma'am, can we please go back to the last question we did? Sure, of course, Hope. Of course I can. Right, Hope, talk to me. Um, one point one said, okay, as you gave us two negative numbers, right? Sure. Yes, and then in algebra it says, um, negative times negative equals positive. Wasn't our answer supposed to be a positive number? So be careful, Hope. What is this? I, I completely agree with you. A negative times a negative does give you a positive. So what is the sign over here? It's a positive sign. It's a plus, hey? So am I oh, counting or am I adding? You're adding. I'm adding. So I'm saying something like this. So I'm saying like negative 7 plus negative 4 equals. So am I timesing there or am I adding? So we're doing this here. So let's go like this. I've got a positive sign and a negative sign next to each other. What's a positive and a negative? What does it give you when you do this? Positive and a negative equals a negative. A negative. So I'm going to say negative 7 minus 4. What's negative 7 minus 4? It's negative e 
Eleven. Eleven. Oh. Make sense? Yes, ma'am. Easy to get confused. Very easy. I completely agree with you. Does it make sense now? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, I see I have one more question here. Uh, Laura, Laura, what's your question? Hi, ma'am. Hi. Um, ma'am, can you just go back to the currency questions? Because of course I, I have can. a question on that because I don't sure. understand. For the, um, the Swiss franc um, question that we yeah. did, I don't quite understand how we got to the answer that we did. So you need to write down the amount in rand that needs to be exchanged to get one Swiss franc. So one Swiss franc, if we go and have a look at the table, it says that for um, if we had to, um, uh, the equivalent of one South African rand is equal to 0 0.093651 francs. Okay. So in francs, if they had to buy one rand, that's how much it would cost them, like nine cents, eh? But if yeah. we had to go and buy one Swiss franc, it would cost us 10,677960. Then the question said to us, that's cool. All right, write down the amount in rand that needs to be exchanged to get one Swiss franc. Give your answer to the nearest cent. Because actually, do we work in cents that are 10 rand and 6,77960 cents? No, ma'am. Nah, we need to round it off to two decimal places. Do you agree? Yes, ma'am, I do. So if we round off to two decimal places, let's just go, oh my dear, my pen keeps running out of um, battery. If we're rounding off to two decimal places, okay, we're rounding off to two decimal places. So we go and we circle this, uh, sorry. Okay, so rounding off to two decimal places. So what I always go and do, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. A bit bigger. I go and I put a line underneath the second decimal place because that's what I'm rounding off to, okay? And if I'm rounding off to the second decimal place, then I'm going to look at the third number, hey? Yes, ma'am. So I always look at the number next to it. Right, what's that number next to it? It's a seven. Do you agree? Yes, ma'am, I do. If that number is greater than five, then what happens? I, I need to make a increase, hey? Yes, ma'am. So what's going to happen to the number that I've underlined? It's going to become an 8, hey? So I'm yes, going to have 10, 6, 8. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Does it make sense, Laura? Yes, ma'am, it does, because I'm, I'm writing my um, math test next week. So I'm just trying oh. to get all the information that I have. So That's perfect. Well done. 